so many people. And um, that was never more evident than the word when the word went out about Doug's demise and everyone was immediately shocked and saddened and knew that we had to be able to come together and spend some time to think and talk about Doug. Those of us that couldn't go to California said, I have to do something on the East Coast, so here we are. I want to give a special thanks to all the organizations that helped us to put this together today, and we'll be hearing from some of them, the Packard Foundation, FHI 360, um, uh, Planned Parenthood Federation, Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, Columbia University, Advocates for Youth, um, ETR Associates, USAID, uh, the National Campaign to, be t to Prevent Teen Pregnancy and Healthy Teen Network, kind of a long list of the national and international who's who of, of uh, adolescent health and well-being. Uh, when we were trying to put a program together, the love and the impact that Doug had on so many made it challenging to decide who, in fact, would get to tell their story and have their moment. And so uh, we, we um, have folks who are going to share their unique moments with Doug to just uh, further enhance what we all know about him, that he was the consummate researcher and um, colleague and just an incredible human being. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge and welcome um, Doug's family who were able to join us today, his wife Catherine, his children, oh, I'm sorry, his wife Gail, <laughs> um, his children Cameron and Catherine, and his brother Rob in particular. So thank you for making the journey and coming to be with us. I'm going to start us off by just telling three little short stories of my own that to me reflect what struck me most about it, Doug. And one was Doug is a researcher. And when I think about Doug as a researcher, I think of the first time that I, I knew him as a researcher was in a lecture that he was giving at a conference somewhere. I was not with Healthy Teen Network. It was several years ago. And I've never heard anybody make research as accessible as that man did in that moment. And I was so struck, particularly because I was struggling to get through my doctoral program at the time, and I was wishing he was my teacher. <laughs> he was certainly making me understand statistics and methodology, all of it in a way that um, that others were not. Um, my second sort of moment to share about, not just a moment, but then we got to work with ETR and Doug quite a bit for a number of years on a CDC project. And that's when we got to really know just what a humorous and warm and generous colleague he was. And just so much fun to work with and so bright and so giving and loving. And then the third thing is just when I think about Doug as a human being and about uh, when uh, my organization was turning 25, which was about 15 so, or so years ago, 14, 15 years ago, we asked Doug if he'd be willing to come to our conference and sort of talk about what we'd seen in the field in the first 25 years and what we could expect to see moving forward. And we gave him what was our inaugural Researcher of the Year Award. And he came and he gave a wonderful talk, very thoughtful as he would, and everybody was asking for copies of it. We ended up printing it and distributing it. But when he received the award, he spent all of his time talking about his family, and Gail was there, and he had the entire conference in tears, as you can imagine, as he sort of spoke of his love for his family. And there was just that moment where all of Doug was sort of present, his ability to, to just make everything make sense for us um, and to just be a family man and all the things that you would want in a human being. Um, as I said, we're going to hear from several folks today. When we're done, we will have some time for a reception. I hope you'll be able to join us. I'm going to invite <coughs> Reverend Deborah Hafner up here now to get us started. I will say that Bill, uh, Bill Alpert and I worked on uh, putting this together, but if it hadn't been for Reverend Hafner, this would have been a very different event. I'm not sure what it would have looked like. It would have been a very different event because we didn't have a clue what we were doing. So, Reverend Hafner. 